Try not to do what Sam Sulik is doing. He burns 300 calories every single time he does cardio on the recumbent bike in 30 minutes. You should try. Coach Greg, in today's video, we're going to be going over the top 10 tips to help you to lose fat and build muscle at the same time. The first tip is to lose no more than 0.5% of your body weight on any given week. And you're going to do that by tracking your median weight. You weigh yourself five to seven times in the week in the morning first thing and you cross out the high numbers and the low numbers that is your median weight and each week you try not to lose more than one half a percent of that so if you're 200 pounds you could lose up to one pound per week and because you're trying to build muscle at the same time the less you lose the better one pound would be considered the most weight you could lose the closer to zero the better and the reason for that is because the greater the deficit the harder it is to build muscle very easy to lose fat in a deficit but much harder to build muscle and so by keeping the deficit very small and slowly losing the weight, you're going to be better equipped to build a muscle while burning off your fat. And so, for example, Sam Sulik, who's eating over 5,000 calories a day on a bulk, he suddenly cuts to 2,500 calories. He's going to drop far more than one pound a week. And by doing that, he's going to reduce his ability to build muscle while cutting. And so if you're trying to build muscle, lose fat at the same time, don't go on bulks and cuts. Way better to main gain. Tip number two it's very important that you train the same way as you would while on a bulk. Just because you're cutting does not mean you need to train differently. Don't add in more sets, more volume, or higher reps. Train exactly the same as you would if you were trying to build muscle optimally. Number three, try to train harder than last time every single workout, aka progressive overload. And of course, some days you're going to fail. You're not going to be able to lift heavier weights or with greater intensity than the day before. But that doesn't mean you can't try. By continuously pushing yourself, you're going to drive the muscles to want to grow and get bigger. And for the most part, the vast majority of people, when they go to the gym, they're not training hard enough. And so if you continually tell yourself, I'm going to train harder than I did the last time I came to the gym, you're going to ensure that you're putting in the proper intensity in order to drive that muscle growth. Number four, there's going to be times when your body is sore. You're both mentally and or physically drain. On those days which are going to happen, you go to the gym and you take one deload day. I did not say a week, one deload day. You go to the gym, you do your regular warm-up weights, you train easy. You don't train hard. You on purpose are holding back. You're saving yourself for the next day. It might be that you're a little sick, that you perhaps push yourself a little bit too hard. And by taking that deload day, it allows your body to refresh, recover, and you're much more capable of pushing yourself the next day. And so rather than thinking, I need an entire week off, I need to go on vacation. Don't think that way. One deload day. After that, go to the gym and again resume training harder than last time. Number five, avoid at all costs doing hit cardio. No more hit cardio. What you need to do is stick to zone two cardio. That is cardio that is not super easy, but it's also not hard. You should be able to carry a conversation and it should be easy to complete. By doing this, you will become a better butter burner. You will burn more calories in the same length of time by continuously trying to do cardio in this fashion. And remember, it's important to progressive overload. When you first start, you might, for example, only burn 200 calories in 30 minutes. But over the course of months and or years, you're continuously going to try to burn a couple more calories, perhaps once a week or once a month. And in doing so, you'll be shocked to see that you'll be able to most often double your calorie burn. You perhaps started at 200 calories in 30 minutes, but after the course of a couple of years, you can now burn 400 calories. The reason for that is because just like your muscles, your heart adapts to exercise. It gets better, gets stronger, can pump out more blood, oxygen, and so you're better able to meet the demands of the exercise that you're doing. But try not to do what Sam Sulik is doing. He burns 300 calories every single time he does cardio on the recumbent bike in 30 minutes. You should try to go a little bit harder, a little bit faster. Not every day, but perhaps every week and or month, you should try to set a PR. Go a little bit faster and you will be shocked to see how much better you get at cardio if you do this over time. Number six, try not to get sore. If you wake up the next day after doing cardio or weights and your body is sore, then you went too hard. Go a little bit easier. 
And in particular, if you're sore from doing cardio, you need to slow the pace down and or switch the form of cardio that you're doing. If you try to do things like jogging, running, sprinting, and so on, it's going to be very impactful. The eccentric load is very demanding, causes muscle tears, and it's twice as hard to recover as if you did easy cardio. And so in favor of doing running, jumping, things like that, much better to do bike riding or perhaps the stepper, elliptical, swimming, things that don't have a high impact on the joints. Be very careful when you start. If you try on the first day to go for a 30 minute jog and you're not used to it, you're most certainly gonna be sore. I do cardio all the time and if I jog for 30 minutes, guaranteed I'm gonna be sore. So please, progressive overload. Start easy and slowly over time you can up the intensity and work into burning more calories than last time. And seven, set both short and long-term realistic goals. And I want to highlight realistic. I've coached thousands of athletes and almost always the goals, they make no sense. They're simply not possible. I want to, in the short term, next three or four months, put on about 15 pounds of muscle, lose 50 pounds of fat. It's not going to happen even in a year. That would be extremely difficult for most people. And so please set realistic goals. In three to four months, if you're lucky, you might perhaps build five pounds of muscle. But in comparison, very easy to lose 10 pounds of fat. And so when setting your goals, understand it's going to take a lot longer to build muscle, but losing body fat is going to be a lot easier. And so in my opinion, a smart goal would be to lose twice as much fat as the muscle you intend to gain. And so if your goal is to put on five pounds of muscle and you currently weigh 200 pounds, in three or four months of now, your goal could be to weigh 195 pounds, but have five pounds more muscle. Very easy for someone to lose 10 pounds of fat in three or four months, and perhaps with luck, they could put on five pounds. Of muscle. And for a long term goal in terms of body fat for most men, I think somewhere between 12 and 15% is realistic for most people. Remember, below 12%, only one or two percentage points of the population can actually be that lean. And so, very hard to maintain sub 12% body fat. And for women, somewhere around 20 to 25% body fat. Remember, women naturally care more body fat than men. It would be ridiculous to think that a woman could maintain the same body fat as a lean man. If a woman were to be 12, 12 to 15% body fat, that is literally stage lean. They would be shredded, abs, veins, and so on. And so please, if you're a woman, have realistic goals with your body fat percentage. Number eight, an amazing tip, hopefully you can do this, try to track everything. And by that, I mean, weigh your food, figure out the calories in everything. Over time, you are going to be shocked at some of the things that you've been doing. Perhaps you never knew how much calories was in the ketchup or barbecue sauces that you're using. You never realized just how many calories were in that dressing. And certain desserts, for example, cheesecake or muffins, may have way more calories than you ever dreamed they could have. And so upon learning these things, you can then make the educated decision to say, I'm not going to have that cheesecake, or at least I'll have it less often. And in comparison, you may be shocked at how little their calories are in certain foods that you eat. For example, Smart Pop popcorn. You're looking at the bowl, seeing how massive it is, and thinking, there's only 200 calories in that? Really? I'm going to have two or three bags full. And so you will slowly, over time, learn what foods to eat, what to avoid, and what works best for your own body. Next, if you notice that your meat Median weight is dropping by more than one pound in a week. You simply add more calories to what you're eating, around 250 extra calories. If you notice that you're not losing any weight, you do the opposite. Reduce your calorie intake by approximately 250 calories. And if you want to go a step further, you can monitor your weight during the week. Let's say your median weight was 200 the previous week. If suddenly you wake up the next day and you're 197, then you probably should eat more. You've already lost three pounds and so you can eat more. And to the opposite extent, if you wake up and you're 202 pounds, it's a good indication that you should probably eat less. And so on any given day, you can quite literally adjust your calorie intake to meet the needs based on your median weight. And so that is why I encourage people to weigh themselves daily. Although some of the weight gain or loss may in fact be water, this allows you to easily monitor your weight on any given day and make small adjustments to ensure you reach your weight loss goals. And number 10, 
And if you want to make it easier than last time, be sure to pick up my Circle Diet Book as well as Cookbook 3.0 to make your dieting easier than last time. And for supplements to make it that much better, GO2 Max as well as ActiBuilder help you to put on more muscle, give you more energy so that you can continue to do your cardio, have plenty of energy, increase your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And so if you're interested in any of these supplements or books, training books, protein bars, creatine, pre-workouts, you name it, we got it. Head over to my website. Don't forget, code Greg, 10% off. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. And if you did like and enjoy the video, please give it a like. Also, watch one of those two bloops. And of course, training books, cookbooks, coaching plans by me and my team, the Circle Diet Book, the Harder Than Last Time clothing line, all can be had at my website. Free diet and training program. Head over to the website. Remember, first and last name and email address coming straight to you. And until next time, I am out.